it seems in America you're regarded as the master guitarist, Mark Knopfler, and they, they trundle you into a session. And Do they expect you to just reproduce that tone kind of thing all the time? No, not really. Uh, in fact, a lot of the sessions that I've been doing lately I haven't been using uh, an electric guitar as such. I've been using nylon, uh, nylon strung electric guitar, which is for Phil Everly, I did some stuff with that, and Scott Walker. And, These uh, names you're mentioning, and Scott Walker, and I think you work with Bob Dylan and Steely Dan, they always repeat to be quite awkward people to work with. Is this <laughs> true or not? Well, I think everybody, everybody's probably a bit awkward in, in their way, because music's probably like that, and mm. a song is like that. And some things go, go, can go sailing through, but maybe another song might bring out something else. So. Uh, one of the great things about music is that there's no, there's no law. You know, there's no formula to anything. People even think that there's a formula to, or want to think that there's a formula to, to guitar playing or, or anything, or to maybe making a TV program. Yeah. But probably no, no one time is quite the same, and 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 it shouldn't be. Uh, there's a biography, an authorised biography out about your group, uh, just simply called Dire Straits at the moment, and I was reading it um, recently. And uh, looking back on the early days, there's all this sense of excitement of you sitting in the back of a car writing Sultans of Swing lyrics and things. In the back of a car, was In it? the back of a car, I think he was. I don't know if that was true, that's what it said. No, it wasn't. Is the <laughs> classic. Do you have the, still have the same enthusiasm for playing live? Which yeah. it seems to wear very quickly with a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you didn't, then you wouldn't. But the money must be very tempting, wasn't it? Even for people who don't particularly feel like it. Well, that hasn't got anything to do with it at all, as far as we're concerned, because we sell a lot of records. And in fact, playing live costs a packet, you know, because uh, because you've got you know you end up taking caterers and, yes. and mm. you have you know seventeen trucks and crew buses and and lighting rigs and you know PA. So it cost I think the last two have cost us about cost about ten thousand pounds probably a day just to play. This live album that you put out, Alchemy, mm. live double LP. Um, which is also, I understand, a video cassette and various other things. It seems to be yeah. a really pronged assault the on worst. the market. <laughs> <laughs> this is all done on one night, is this correct? Yes, it's This is supposed to be all. very authentic as live albums go. It is. There are no overdubs on it. No. Like it's even got, uh, I haven't had to put a little apology on for stage crackles. You get lightning buzzers off the, you know, like field effect from, from the guitar. And there's some, there's some pretty nasty greenies in there as well. Greenies. So it's absolutely... Uh, the thing, and it was, oh, we were very pleased that it, it worked out that way because it was one night instead of recording 17 different performances. We actually recorded a few in Paris, but we didn't use any. I was playing them, and then when we got to London, it, that, that, so it was a Saturday night, and I just put the cassette on of it, and it just, it just worked.